Because we, we didn't get into this yet, but there's a phenomenon called the hallmarks of aging, which are these underlying things that go wrong as we age. And these are phenomena that seem to underlie all disease. So the idea is if you, if you treat these things, or if you correct these problems called the hallmarks of aging, that it will dramatically extend life. So mm. if, we, if we cured all the cancer and heart disease from the planet, how many years extra do you think we'd live? Um, probably an extra 10, I don't know. Mm, three to five, three to five. Okay. Maybe push it seven. Okay. If you address the hallmarks, we'd go to 120 or 150. So, so if we eliminate diseases. The number one and two killers in the world, we got rid of them, it's only gonna give us a few extra years really? of life. Yeah. Wow. What are the other hallmarks then? Well, the, so the other hallmarks are really well driven around, uh, well, around these 10, I call it, 10 things. One of them is the microbiome, and we'll get back to how to take care of your microbiome, but I'll just sort of list the hallmarks, and then we can come back to how to eat for your microbiome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, the, first, the first thing is that happens is you get damage to your DNA. So there's, every day there's little insults, toxins, the bad diet we're eating, whatever it is, stress, causing a little death by a thousand cuts. But thank God you have a repair system. You know, you have a DNA repair system that goes out on a mission and starts to fix all the damages. Now, over time, you, you, you may have 99.9% fixing, but then there's that 1.1% that keeps getting worse over time. So that's one thing. Second is we get damage to our telomeres, which are these little, these little things at the end of our chromosomes that keep them safe and intact, and they shorten as we get older, and if they're too short, the cells stop replicating mm -hmm. and you die. Uh, then there's epigenetic changes, and epi epigenetics are really important because it helps us distinguish between our chronological age and our biological age. So how, our chronological age is how long we're alive. I was born in 1959. I can't do anything about that. <laughs> I just can't. I'm 63 on the calendar, and I can't do anything about that. But my biological age yeah. is how old I am on the inside. So how do we reverse the biology, uh, the biological age while we continue to age That's the plan. So I did, I did my biological age and I at 62 and I was 43. Wow. So biologically I'm 43, I'm going for 25, but I'm chronologically 62. That's so crazy. We can, get, we can get biologically younger as we get chronologically older. And studies have found even in eight weeks with a in high intensity dietary interventions and lifestyle stuff, you can reverse biological age in eight weeks by three years. That's incredible. What's the biggest gap that has been recorded, do you know, in terms of chronological and biological? Well, this is really new because we, we really only started measuring the epigenetic ages through a biological clock over the last couple of years. Oh my gosh. Because this is really new science. So now we have a metric to determine interventions and how they work on affecting your biological age. So people say, we eat better, exercise, take this vitamin, okay, whatever, take this drug. How do we measure how it's really affecting you and your biological clock? Mm -hmm. Well, now we have metrics. How do we measure that? So it's measured by, by taking a blood sample uh -huh. and looking at the epigenome, which is basically means above your genes. Your genes are fixed. You've got 20,000 genes. They're like the keyboard on a piano. There's 88 keys, can't do anything about that. But the epigenome is like the piano player. You know, mm. the piano player can play jazz, rock, classical, Mozart, you know, reggae, whatever that. You want blues, ragtime, all on the same piano. So that's the epigenome, is the piano player. Mm. And what determines which songs get played in your book of life, in your song book of life, is everything washing over your genes throughout your life. Your thoughts, your relationships, what you eat, your exercise, like sleep, mm -hmm. how you handle stress, Every, environmental yeah. toxins, your microbiome, literally everything is washing over the genes constantly and regulating the epigenome. So by living a healthy lifestyle, by doing some of the things we're gonna talk about around how do we sort of hack longevity, we can actually improve the expression of our epigenome and reverse our biological clock. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the hallmarks of aging, the epigenetic degradation happens as we get older, okay. but we can fix that. And then there's, damage to proteins. So you have proteins that are the communication systems in your body. And it's like, you know, having kind of a scratched uh, CD or I don't mm. know if anybody knows what a sure, CD sure. is anymore. Yeah, record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <It's> a record. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just these proteins get misfolded or misshapen. They don't work right. And, and so you have this damaged protein. So we have to fix that. And then there's uh, problems with stem cells. Stem cells get tired. Mm -hmm. They don't produce as well. You can't rejuvenate your body as well. So they get what we call stem cell exhaustion. And then there's these horrible things that happen called zombie cells. Zombie cells are called senescent cells. Senescence means aging. So basically these cells uh, are supposed to die, but they don't die. And they just continue to um, spew out nasty chemicals uh, 
inflammatory chemicals and produce inflammation. And that's another one of the hallmarks of aging is inflammation. Is inflammation. Inflammation, right? Everything that happens as you get older connects to inflammation. Mm. So inflammation is kind of the disease of aging. And it's why so many people were susceptible to COVID because we really were all pre-inflamed. And then the COVID hit, it's like gasoline on a fire. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have inflammation as a uh, hallmark of aging. And then then we have uh, uh, mitochondrial changes. Mitochondria are the energy factories in your cells or in your muscle, they're in every organ, every cell. And our mitochondria poop out. That's why you see like a two-year-old running around like a jackrabbit and someone who's 90 kind of moving kind of slow because their mitochondria are not working right. But those are things we can regenerate, repair, Mm, renew, recreate. We can build through like the protein and exercise and various supplements and foods all help rejuvenate mitochondria. And then there's another uh, group, which is uh, of of, of, uh, hallmarks. It's really one class. It's called deregulated nutrient sensing. And And that's a big mumbo jumbo of words, but it basically means how your body senses food and that screws up as we get older and there's basically this is really the crux of a lot of the interventions around longevity is how do we properly activate these nutrient sensing pathways to enhance our health and and extend our life versus Mm, the opposite right so your body's constantly picking up signals from the food you're eating right proteins fats sugars all that and these four pathways are influenced by what you're eating. We talked about one of them, mTOR. So that detects uh, too much of protein or sugar. Mm-hmm. And then that can be yeah. important. And, and, if, and, and if that's overstimulated, your body's gonna age faster. If it's inhibited periodically, right? So, like fasting is good, but if you fast all the time, you're gonna die of starvation, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Cold plunges are great. Uh-huh. And I know you did Wim Hof's yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. If, you're for, <laughs> for, if you're in there for two hours, you might. Yeah, if you're in there for like three days, you're going to die, <laughs> right? So like you can, there's a, there's a Goldilocks dose, right? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's really important to remember. So there's mTOR. There's also something called insulin signaling pathways. So mm-hmm. insulin uh, signaling is really important to regulate your blood sugar. But if you're constantly eating starch and sugar, it's like a avalanche of starch and sugar that overactivates this pathway and drives cancer, heart disease, dementia, disease, inflammation, mm-hmm. mitochondrial damage, DNA damage, all the things that we don't want to happen. All the epigenetic changes that we see, all the hallmarks of aging are all driven by these pathways. Right. And then there's two other pathways. They detect um, insulin signaling and mTOR detect too much of stuff, right? Too much sugar and protein. And then the other two pathways, sirtuin pathways and AMPK are important for sensing lack or scarcity. That turns them on. So sirtuins are really amazing because they get activated and they send out like an army of repair, uh, a repair team throughout your body to repair all your DNA, to make new mitochondria, to shut off inflammation, to improve insulin sensitivity, to do all kinds of great things, to increase your antioxidant systems. And that's activated by resveratrol. We might've heard yes. about, you know, the, the work of David Sinclair and how red wine and red, you know, red, 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 red resveratrol might extend life. Well, it did in these mice, it's extended by a third. But it was the equivalent of 1,500 bottles of red wine. Right. So you don't want to be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so they were the getting alcohol is not highly as good. No, no, the, no, the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> 1,500 bottles of red wine, you'd be dead. Uh, so, so basically, it's, you can activate these pathways. But NAD, people have heard of NAD and NAD shots and eye drips, and that works on their sirtuin pathways. So this is how this works. You might have heard about metformin as a drug for longevity. That works on AMPK to help improve insulin sensitivity. So. There's other ways to activate that through plant compounds mm-hmm. and through exercise and all sorts of things. So we don't really need the drugs. I, I'm not a big fan of metformin. We can talk more about that if you want. But um, I don't know if I got to all 10, but I think those are right. the...